India's fourth largest private sector bank providing superior interest rates. And the finest banking experience for NRIs. Your support inspires us to do better. Don't miss out on the opportunity. Contact Yes Bank today. Before you realize, your loved ones will grow. What about your money? For incredible investment opportunities, talk to SMC. Money wise, be wise. Trade precious metals, currencies and energy futures in the first and largest derivatives exchange in the region. Trade the unique Indian rupee futures contract and hedge your price risk. Trade gold futures on a regulated and secure platform. Regulated by Securities and Commodities Authority in the UAE. Dubai Gold and Commodities Exchange. Liquid markets and tight spread. Superior transaction speed. Wider range of trading and clearing services. Emerging market access for the global market. Global market access access for regional investors. DGCX, right time, right place. India's fourth largest private sector bank providing superior interest rates. And the finest banking experience for NRIs. Your support inspires us to do better. Don't miss out on the opportunity. Contact Yes Bank today. your money for incredible investment opportunities talk to SMC money wise be wise India's fourth largest private sector bank providing superior interest rates and the finest banking experience for NRIs your support inspires us to do better don't miss out on the opportunity contact yes bank today everyone my name is Pallavi welcome to the second edition of the Indian budget Middle East impact I would like to invite mr. Naveen Chandra the head of international business for Times television network to open the session tonight his excellency Consul General of India uh, mr. Sanjay Verma distinguished panelists ladies and gentlemen this is the second year of the India budget Middle East impact and I must tell you I'm not qualified to comment on the fiscal deficit but we've had a major deficit of chairs here the hall is packed to the brim compared to last year and I thank all of you to have joined this discussion and I hope that all of you enjoy the evening times now is part of the times group as you all know the times group is India's largest diversified media conglomerate with interests in uh, radio, television, print, uh, mobile, VAS, movies, events uh, across the media continuum. We print uh, the world's largest English language daily called the Times of India as you all know. We have a clutch of brands that spread from uh, various parts of the media continuum and each of these brands are leaders in their domain uh, respectively. Times Television Network has been uh, a very urban, differentiated and focused number one uh, a set of number one television channel brands in India. We have four of these. Times Now is uh, India's leading English news channel with very differentiated uh, and focused content. Zoom is India's biggest Bollywood channel. ET Now is uh, India's biggest business news channel. And Movies Now is India's biggest Hollywood HD English movie channel. Each of these products uh, have, have become number one because of the unique quality of programming and continue to invest in growing themselves in various markets. And at this stage, I would like to invite uh, His Excellency, Consul General of India, uh, Mr. Sanjay Verma, to open the session today. 
Thank you so much. Please give him a big round of applause. Thank you, Naveen. Uh, distinguished uh, members of the three panels which, are, which have been put up for this uh, lovely evening of uh, interaction, debate, discussion on the budget. Uh, senior members of the Indian community, friends, ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, Namaskar, Salaam Alaikum and a very, very good evening. Your understanding of India is only the cities only the affluence and the but a lot of India is still in the villages there are uh, great uh, uh, economic divides uh, uh, there is uh, uh, poverty in certain sectors certain communities aren't doing as well as the others certain sectors of the economy aren't health education so government has to play a corrective uh, role what you call inclusive growth so the budget comes in there it can kick in uh, you know, a few measures, uh, dole out money or allocate money to certain sectors of the economy, tax the rich. The fact that a figure like 42,800 sticks out in the budget tells us that we need to do a lot more so that the rich pay more uh, as taxation. And why shouldn't they? I mean, uh, we talk about the Azmi, uh, Premji's Azmi spirit of giving. That is not happening in India. So while that doesn't happen, taxes will happen. That is one way of looking at it. What I would like to share with you is the general trends in uh, the budget since the liberalization process in 91. The, the fact is that the GDP is actually the biggest driver of tax revenue. Whenever GDP has grown, tax revenues have grown. For example, uh, the tax collection uh, in the year 2004-2005 was about 2 lakh crores. But because of the fantastic growth of 7, 8, 9% in the last 3, 4 years, that became 10 lakh crores in, financial, in the last financial year because GDP grew, grew, grew to such an extent. Lower tax rates have meant higher revenue. The tax base change has happened in this liberalization period. The direct taxes which were about 22% in 91 are today 56% in the sense that indirect taxes are now less than direct taxes. So the rich are paying more rather than the poor. I thank uh, the organizers and Times Now and uh, uh, ET and Zoom for inviting me for this occasion. I wish all of you a very happy uh, evening, a good, uh, fruitful uh, discussion, debates, and uh, feel free. And I'm sure we'll pick up a few pointers for our finance minister from here. Thank you. Thank you, His Excellency, Mr. Sanjay Varma. I would now like to invite Dr. Shubhadha Rao, the Senior President and Chief Economist of Yes Bank, to give the keynote address for the Indian Budget 2000 East, the Middle East Impact. On behalf of Yes Bank and Mr. Rana Kapoor, uh, welcome all of you on this important day when we are going to des uh, decisively analyze the budget and give a verdict perhaps at the end of the day, good, bad or ugly. I hope good. That's what the tone I would like to set for the budget. Uh, yes, Bank, as you all know, is the youngest commercial bank in India, now eight years old. And we have been growing over the last, all the years, about 30 to 35 percent. A balance sheet size of close to about 88,000 crores. We have a 412 branches in India, aspiring to nearly double that uh, in, by 2015. Uh, yes, we do not have a branch presence yet in the region here. We wait for a regulatory approval, but back home, uh, we are considered to be one of the dynamic banks, the youngest bank with young people, average age being just about 29 years, and that is the kind of energy and passion that we like to work with. And uh, without much ado, there's a lot to discuss. The reappointed finance minister's budgetary preparation, if I may say so, started in September 2012 when he began to address the twin deficit concerns, that of subsidies, that of attracting foreign direct investment, and more importantly, beginning to address the one key single concern on current account gap, which was gold. He began 
to raise import duties on gold. So quite clearly the concerns were very important for him to begin addressing. Over the last few months, as you all notice, he has been progressively addressing those and the key measure that he took was uh, raising the diesel prices, a hugely political sensitive issue and more importantly, he did not roll back. I think that goes to add to the testimony of the seriousness of his preparation for the budget. Uh, so quite clearly, um, no miracles, but what he has done is small, very meaningful steps. To start off with, since we are here in Dubai this evening, I thought you know, we could start off very quickly uh, you know, highlighting how the trade and investment relations with the region have evolved over the years. Quite clearly over the two decades, if you look at the trade numbers, uh, please bear me out because I think it's like telling all of you what you do. So, but for the propriety, I would like to take it sequentially. So from $2 billion to taking it to $72 billion, that's, that's the kind of a scaling up we have done in trade. Obviously, uh, the negotiations have been ongoing. We have had 17 bilateral uh, agreements that we have seen uh, over the many years. Uh, obvious uh, uh, trading commodities are petroleum products, gems, jewelry, textiles, and so on. It's a two-way traffic. India, by the way, is UAE. Uh, uh, largest trading partner for India is UAE. That's how important the region has become for India. I think the finance minister has delivered a very no-nonsense, meaningful, incisive budget, which to my mind will have a lot of positive bearing in restoring India's macroeconomic balances towards positive, begin to address inflation, begin to kickstart growth, look at financial savings to get encouraged, and most important, look at current account gap narrowing. Thank you. We are very positive about Dubai particularly and Middle East is a very good, great country and we are very positive about it. How does it really connect with you as an investor? The fact that he's brought it down to 5.2% and he's hoping to bring it down further to 4.8%. If you as an investor want to put your money in India, does it make for a better case of investment? India's fourth largest private sector bank providing superior interest rates and the finest banking experience for NRIs. Your support inspires us to do better. Don't miss out on the opportunity. Contact Yes Bank today. Before you realize, your loved ones will grow. What about your money? For incredible investment opportunities, talk to SMC. Money wise, be wise. India's fourth largest private sector bank providing superior interest rates and the finest banking experience for NRIs. Your support inspires us to do better. Don't miss out on the opportunity. Contact Yes Bank today. largest private sector bank providing superior interest rates and the finest banking experience for NRIs. Your support inspires us to do better. Don't miss out on the opportunity. Contact Yes Bank today. Well, moving on, the budget big picture. I would like to invite Ms. Paramita Chatterjee. Senior Editor and Analyst, ET Now. I would also like to invite Mr. S.C. Agarwal, Chairman and Managing Director, SMC Group, Co-Chairman, Asocham Capital Market Committee. Mr. Agarwal. 
I would also like to invite Dr. Bharat Bhutani, President, India Business Promotion Council, Dubai. So let's start off this discussion this evening by getting two sides of the story. Mr. Agarwal here is going to give you the inside story. How are we within India perceiving the budget? A lot of analysis, but we are all, we, you could say we are a bit of a frog in the well syndrome because we are all analyzing within ourselves, within the country that listen, this is how we perceive, this is how the impact is going to be. But actually the perception outside the country could be very different and that's been the learning. So Mr. Butani here is going to try and give us that aspect. So that's the first part of this discussion. So let me start off with both of you gentlemen. And this is a bit like during the college festivals, you know, you had both sides of the story. So we'll try and make it as exciting as possible. But the big question here, Mr. Agarwal, let me start with you. Has Mr. Chidambaram been able to do that? Uh, thank you, Primuta, uh, to invite me. You see, a lot of expectation was there from the finance minister when he was to present this budget on 28 February 2013. Uh, since he has done many reforms earlier, uh, FDI in detail, and so many things were expecting from him. And the challenge was, uh, this was his last and our first budget as a UPA2 government, and uh, uh, election is to be held after that. So it was his last opportunity. He has to keep in his mind balancing the various expenditure he has to... So were you satisfied? Sorry to cut you in. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you satisfied? Yeah, we are yes, satisfied sir. giving the present circumstances. He has done the wonderful job. Hmm. He has been able to contain the fiscal deficit to 5.2 percent uh, as against the budget 5.3 percent, whereas in the last year it was 5.7 percent and nobody was predicting uh, less than 6 percent. Everybody was thinking it will close 6 percent. So it was a go good job. Credit rating agencies were right. behind him observing his budget. So he has done a balanced job. Okay. So you give him, you would say he has passed. Yes. He has passed more than 5 out of 10 uh, on this budget. Mr. Bhutani, how, what was your perception of this budget? Did he deliver on the expectations which were building up? Thank you, Paramita, for inviting me on the panel. and about the budget, yes, I think he did deliver. Uh, he's a veteran of eight budgets, I, I think, if I'm not wrong. And he's a CEO, basically, by his profession. He's been managing a company. So he would manage the company, in Indian budget, as a company budget, which would be excellent. He's done a great job. And uh, of course, we have a change of FM. The previous, as uh, Mr. Agarwal said, it, it was, uh, for the target last year was set at 5.3 and we have gone down to 5.2 and probably might, when the figures finally come, it might further go down. So it's, it's good. And I think the fiscal deficit, possibly even a six-year-old now knows about the fiscal deficit because we've been talking about it for a long time and it's unlikely to go away. But the fact of the matter is, how does it really connect with you as an investor? The fact that he's brought it down to 5.2% and he's hoping to bring it down further to 4.8%. If you as an investor want to put your money in India, does it make for a better case of investment? To answer those questions and more, let me ask the rest of the panelists to join us uh, on stage. And uh, may I begin with uh, Shubhada Rao, of course, who joins us uh, on stage. Mr. S.C. Agarwal, Chairman and Managing Director of the SMC Group Co-Chairman. Mr. Bharat Bhutani, who is of course right here with us. Mr. Goran Desai, who is the Chief Operating Officer of the Dubai Gold Commodity Exchange. Mr. Pramod Manghat of the UAE Exchange. And Mr. Gaurav Ghosh, Financial Features Editor at Gulf News. Together they do only about 9 to 10 billion dollars worth of business. Whereas in uh, DGCX in Dubai we do at the same time about 3 billion dollars worth of business. We have a very deep uh, network of uh, branches in UAE. We have uh, 125 branches in UAE, which, uh, which spread across the country where the customers can come in and do the transactions. And also we have the best of the class products available. For, insta for, for example, a product called Flash Remit, which uh, instantly credit account to any banks in India. 
uh, even on a Sunday evening 8 p.m., you walk into our branch, uh, your account gets credited uh, same day in any of the banks. We work with almost all the banks. So as UAE Exchange, you know, we have grown uh, from a brand of UAE to almost 30 countries with uh, 700 branches. In this environment where it's difficult to trust, especially given this government's past track record of slippages, can we actually trust that figure of A, 5.2% is uh, going to be achieved, but 4.8% next year. Can we actually believe in those numbers? That was a question many of us had to ask. India's fourth largest private sector bank providing superior interest rates and the finest banking experience for NRIs. Your support inspires us to do better. Don't miss out on the opportunity. Contact Yes Bank today. Before you realize, your loved ones will grow. What about your money? For incredible investment opportunities, talk to SMC. Money wise, be wise. Trade precious metals, currencies and energy futures in the first and largest derivatives exchange in the region. Trade the unique Indian rupee futures contract and hedge your price risk. Trade gold futures on a regulated and secure platform. Regulated by Securities and Commodities Authority in the UAE. Dubai Gold and Commodities Exchange. Liquid markets and tight spread. Superior transaction speed. Wider range of trading and clearing services. Emerging market access for the global market. Global market access access for regional investors. DGCX, right time, right place. India's fourth largest private sector bank providing superior interest rates and the finest banking experience for NRIs. Your support inspires us to do better. Don't miss out on the opportunity. Contact Yes Bank today. largest private sector bank providing superior interest rates and the finest banking experience for NRIs. Your support inspires us to do better. Don't miss out on the opportunity. Contact Yes Bank today. gentlemen many thanks for joining us for this discussion now this part of the story as we said is going to focus on the big picture Shubhata just told us about the fiscal deficit and how it works and but the key question that Shubhata we all came out of this budget and which everybody wanted to know is in this environment where it's difficult to trust especially given this government's past track record of slippages can we actually trust that figure of a 5.2% is uh, going to be achieved, but 4.8% next year. Can we actually believe in those numbers? That was a question many of us had to ask. Uh, Paramita, I think for this, uh, you have to see the credibility of this finance minister. Since right since September, the difficult measures that he's been announcing, mind you, there hasn't been a single major rollback. I say major because for LPG cylinders, you had the six and nine issue. But barring that, you really haven't seen any rollback despite perceived opposition from within its coalition partners and so, so on. So when you did the math as an economist, you said, listen, he's talking about revenue rising by 16%. Uh, you know, some amount of, you know, plan expenditure, he's kept it within limits. Yeah. I think he can do the job. Is, is that the I, I, I would think tax collection growth has been put very realistically, achievable. Mm. As I said earlier on, that what we really would like to see is on the other non-tax revenue aspect, which is the disinvestment and also the telecom spectrum. So let, let me flip this question to the other side. For you as investors and analysts here in Dubai, running exchanges, do you believe, and how important is this fiscal deficit figure of 4.8%? Do you believe 
that this is something that the market believes and investors believe can be adhered to. Correct. The fact that the market tanked on the day uh, the budget was being announced uh, and it has not been doing very well over the last few days shows that the market really was not, uh, is, um, didn't react very well to, to, to his assurances, number one. Number two, I think uh, the more important point is in, in terms of uh, uh, the figure 4.8, uh, well, he has uh, managed to squeeze, you know, fr uh, from 5.5, 5.7 to 5.2, that shows, but still the market was expecting something more in terms of assurances, um, whether it was a one issue was, of course, um, the TRC. And, right. And, and so, so, so basically, you're going back to the big picture. You felt he wasn't was, able to yeah, deliver. Yeah, for, for, for uh, 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 foreign investors, there were some issues, we can go into the specifics later on, right. but there were some issues that the tax residency certificate was one issue, um, which, which actually uh, led to the market going down, that was one issue. Right. The, uh, the other one, of course, is the market sentiment, to improve market sentiment, you have to have some concrete measures uh, to boost the market. There was right. nothing concrete in the... In, in As somebody the, said, there's nothing in the stock, at least for the equity markets in the There was budget. nothing there, yeah, that's, oh, that's okay. what I felt. But, but then, of course, one can counter that argument, but I'll come to that a little uh, later on. Gaurav, what is your reaction to the kind of measures that he's taken? He's actually allowed physically people like, like you and me to actually bring in more amounts of gold into the country. He's not hiked the import duty. He's hiked the uh, uh, commodities transaction tax. Put it together for me as an investor in gold, and what does it really do uh, to that commodity? I think the single biggest uh, uh, announcement is the introduction of CTT. Uh, you can see in the stock price of MCX, which has tanked 10 percent since this budget speech, and also the volumes which have gone down by 20 percent in the last, last couple of sessions. I mean, for a normal hedger, normal investor, which used to pay about 160 rupees, they will have to shell out 1,160 rupees for the same transaction. So that is a kind of uh, additional burden on this, right. which has uh, very interesting implications worldwide, especially for the, this region where uh, Dubai has been city of gold and it has been gateway to India in terms of gold. Uh, I think some of other uh, people have already mentioned that alternative channels, the illegal channels, used to be flying from so here. So you think this will just push it to the illegal channel instead of Not the necessarily, channel? but uh, it, could, it could affect the liquidity on Indian exchanges in the markets. Uh, there's a very interesting uh, comment in the budget speech where uh, before Chidambaram uh, reduced the STT, it says the taking note of changes and shifts in the market, I propose to reduce uh, STT from 1.7 basis point to 1 basis point. So that clearly shows in 2008 onwards since the STT was almost fully enforced because four years before... Under equity section, markets went... So equity markets have been stagnant. Right. Commodity market has grown by 3.5 times. Right. And now they have introduced 1 basis point on that commodities. And at the same time, they have left currency market untouched, which is 10 times bigger than the commodities. So all in all, it's good for us here in Middle East for D DGCX, which is the largest exchange in the because Middle East. a lot East. of the volume of trade will shift to you. We, we would expect that. I mean, uh, INR contract, which has been our biggest contract, uh, INR futures, we were the pioneers. Right. We, we virtually forced government of India to think about this segment and open up this segment. And today, India does about, on a good day, $9 billion worth of uh, currency futures, whereas we do about $3 billion. But uh, Pramod, let me bring you in here, because you also handle uh, and you also look at this aspect of the market. Uh, how do you see this impact? Because he, there is a certain thinking. He's not said that, listen, I'm going to in introduce some huge import duty on gold, restrict this market, kill it completely, or rather attempt to do that. Um, what's yep. your reaction? See, though there has been an increase in the duty-free imports uh, for male and female from 10,000, 20,000 to 50,000 and 1 lakh, from a remittance industry perspective, what we see is that the current regime of controlling on the customs duty uh, may still drive movement to alternative channels. Just to give some heads up on numbers, for example, as on Monday, the 6 percentage price arbitrage between uh, Dubai and Bombay on gold. Specifically, 152 per gram 
is the price arbitrage between Dubai and uh, Bombay. Hmm. We know that uh, till late 90s, when there was no allowment of, Dubai, of the gold imports, there used to be a big difference in the rates offered by way of formal remittances and informal remittance. Right. We need to bring in the context. Last year, India received 70 billion dollars, which is 20 percentage more than the last.